stay seated throughout the entire ride. Little ones can be seated in your lap. They just gotta stay seated the whole time too. Please keep your tails, paws, hands, and any objects like cell phones or cameras inside these cars, not out over those metal bars. And please no eating, drinking, or smoking on this train, with the exception of water. Safari is a Swahili word meaning journey. We're going to start our journey deep in the Ivory Rainforest that's located in the Democratic Republic of Congo. Now in that rainforest, there is an animal that is so shy and elusive, it actually wasn't named its own species until 1901, making it one of the last large mammals to be discovered. We're looking towards the back right hand side of the habitat for that tall, dark, and handsome Okapi. Oh, it looks like our Okapi is going to give us a little, change his mind, it looked like it was going to give us a little bit of a show. The Okapi is well known for the striping pattern on its hindquarters. So if you look in that back right hand corner for that striping pattern. Now if you were a researcher traveling through Africa, there was a brand new animal with stripes on its hindquarters. What do you think it's related to? Yeah, zebras. That's what researchers thought as well. But we now know the Okapi is not related to a zebra. In fact, it is the only living relative of the giraffe. Okapi and giraffe share a lot of similarities. They both have elongated necks, sloping hindquarters, and over a foot long, purple, prehensile tongue. Prehensile means grasping, and the Okapi is able to use that tongue to grab the leaves off of trees. They can also use it for some specialized Okapi hygiene. They can clean out their eyes, their ears, and the inside of their nose with that tongue. Oh, that's a zebra. Now I know some of y'all are trying to try that. So go ahead. See if you can clean out your nose with your tongue. It's not a zebra. Yeah, y'all might may think that's funny, but it's not. Okapi actually communicate through a series of sounds that are so low that the human ears can't even pick them up. Lucky for y'all, I have been told that I do a great Okapi impersonation. So here I go. It's pretty amazing, wasn't it? That's right, so low that the human ears can't even pick it up. Hey, we're traveling up into the mountains, and in the mountains you'll find members of the mountain goat family. These are Nubian Ibex. Both males and females in Nubian Ibex have horns. The male's horns are much larger. They're about four feet long and curve back behind their head. Ibex have specialized hooves that are concave, working almost like suction cups. They can stand on something about an inch wide. In fact, they can jump and land on something about the size of a dollar bill. That is really important when it comes to evading predators. Even a young Ibex at only three hours old is starting to stand up and move around and climb on the rocks. Hey, those of y'all shopping with little ones today, think about what they were doing at three hours old. Pretty sure it was not rock climbing. Africa has a huge variety of habitats. I know most people tend to think about the desert or the savanna, but we already saw a small sampling. We went through the rainforest, we saw some of the mountainous habitats, and we are entering the woodland habitat right now. In fact, 40% of Africa is covered by woodlands. Now in our woodland habitat, in the center of the habitat, all the way in the back, straight up the hill, there's a brown animal. This is an eland. Again, in the center of the habitat, all the way in the back up the hill, is that eland. And the eland is the largest species of antelope. So there are the because these here. guys are so large, they are one of the slower species of antelope. See? Elands there? can only there. run around 25 miles per hour. It's now that there. may not seem that slow to you See? or me. I mean, I max See out that around one. three See, miles an hour. Oh. But for See, other antelope species and predators, that's quite slow. In fact, the fastest gazelle, there. which is part of the antelope family, there, there. is a tall gazelle that moves around 60 miles an hour. So. 25 to 60. But what these guys lack in agility or in speed, they make up for in agility. Elon's do behavior called pronking. Pronking is basically jumping to avoid predators. And an eland can jump six to eight feet straight up in the air to avoid a predator. Now as we travel in the space between habitats, 
keep your eyes open for what I call our Dallas Zoo volunteers, our native wildlife. Things like birds and squirrels can be seen along here. We also get lizards. Yeah, we got a lizard out here today. Can yeah. you guys spot that lizard? Point him out to your other train mates. Yeah. I like to call that lizard Ted. He's kind of like our monorail mascot. We see him basically every time we come around. In fact, if we came around and didn't see Ted, I would be pretty surprised. Mainly because he's a statue. Uh. Well, we are going to see our first predator on the other side of the rock wall. I'm going to slow the train down so we can get a good look. Let's see, we've got, one, we've got both of them sleeping on the ground towards the left hand side of the habitat. Down on the ground towards the left. These are caracals. Caracals are a fearsome predator. Do not be cool by that small stature. These guys can take down something that is three times their body weight. What they're really known for doing is being amazing jumpers. The caracal can jump six or oh, eight yeah, to ten feet straight up in the air to catch a bird in flight. In fact, caracals have been seen jumping into a flock of birds and pulling out as many as six birds in one single jump. Um, now, caracal is a Turkish word meaning black eared. So, if you notice those ears on those cats, you would notice they were black, which gets that name. We do have a pretty cool photo opportunity coming up, so get your cameras ready. Just remember to keep them inside the cars. And I bet you all can guess where you're going to hear or guess where you're going to see just by listening. Yes, the waterfall, if you were correct, this represents the Nile River, which is the longest river in the world. The African people call the Nile River the lifeblood of Africa. Its water resources are so important. We can work to conserve our own water resources. It's simple things like turning off the water when you brush your teeth or using recycled rainwater to water your plants at home. And swimming along our Nile River, we have some white pelicans. Pelicans are a pestivore, that means fish eater. And the white pelicans will swim along the surface of the water, scooping up a bunch of water and fish inside their beak. They've got a specialized pouch underneath called a gular pouch. And that gular pouch can hold up to three gallons of water. Really amazing. You think about how much a gallon of milk is that you bring home from the store. Guys, we are going to be heading directly underneath this next waterfall. I'm going to pop off the microphone. Y'all enjoy these falls. I'll catch you on the other side. Bird. 
This is a Stanley's blue crane. This is the national bird of South Africa. And those long feathers on that Stanley's blue crane, those are not wing feathers. Or those are not tail feathers. Those are wing feathers. We'll have a couple of different mammals to see. The cinnamon brown ones with cream colored stripes are bongo. Bongo are critically endangered. In fact, there's estimated to be less than 100 bongo on the wild population. Guys, there's 106 people on this train. That means there are more people on this train than bongo in the wild. Now, sitting by the hay feeder, those two shaggy brown mammals, those are water bucks. And let me tell you guys, I like big bucks and I cannot lie. Water bucks have a great adaptation when it comes to keeping predators away. They stink, smell bad, and taste bad. Definitely don't want to have a water buck. Now, the water environment is extremely important, but not all the animals live near the water environment. We're traveling up to meet some animals in the desert environment next. 